Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Comic Con Africa 2020. I'm your host, Robbie Collins. I hope you guys have been having a great day with us. Um, I know you guys are comfortable at home with your families and friends enjoying Heritage Day, but stay tuned, guys. We have an amazing guest for you guys coming up. Please remember that we are live on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and, of course, YouTube. Um, shout out to Nuligan. That was amazing. Very cool listening to all of that. Um, but without further ado, we have an um, animated extraordinaire. This guy is behind Fairy, fairy God Tale. Sorry. I love <laughs> he is behind Dexter's. And um, this guy is amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Butch Hartman. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Sweet. How are you? I'm very well. And hey, you? Good I'm, this is, I'm good. I'm calling. I'm talking to you from California, uh, in America, right now. Oh wow! So you you ten hours behind us? Yes, it's very early in the morning here. But, Thank you so uh, much. Always time to draw cartoons. Always time to get <laughs> cartoons going. So it doesn't matter what time it is. I didn't realize how much of a fan I was of your work. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad, you know, you need to realize these things a lot earlier and you'll have a much better life. You yeah, are. no, totally, totally, totally. I, I love your stuff. It's really amazing. Um, I, wanted to ask, I wanted to ask you something. This is a personal question of mine, uh, especially when it comes to Dexter's. What comes first, the voice of the characters or your drawings? Oh, you always put the, uh, the voices are always done first. And the reason the voices are done first, because it depends on the inflection that the character gives it depends on uh, what the character is saying, and that will inform the animator or the artist how to animate that character. So the voice is always done first. And uh, once the animation's done to the voice, very rarely on occasion you'll see something in the animation like, oh, we should add a, uh, if the character falls and hits the ground real hard, right. oh, we should add like a oof there, or we should add an impact sound there. So there's things we can add afterwards, but 90% of the dialogue is done beforehand. Right. Um, so what is the first thing that comes up when, when you are creating a, a character in your head? When you oh, it's, um, you, sometimes it depends. I mean, you know, if you want to design a character in a funny way, it's the character design it. That is, um, sometimes comes first. Sometimes it's the, um, the voice of the character. You'll, oh, like if you're doing SpongeBob, oh, hey, that's it. You know, you'll do the voice first. Or, you know, uh, when I was doing uh, the shows I created, I created a show called The Fairly Odd Parents, uh, which was on Nickelodeon for 17 years. I did a show called Danny Phantom which was a show on Nickelodeon as well. I did a show called Tough Puppy uh, and a show called Bunsen is a Beast. And each one of those shows had different characters and different designs and different aspects of why those characters were interesting. Some of the characters were uh, created simply because I was having fun drawing them. Right. And some kind of char some characters came up because I needed an extra character in the show. And then that character became one of the most popular characters. So it just depends on what the audience likes. What, what was the inspiration behind Danny Phantom? Danny Phantom came about because I'm a huge comic book fan. And um, I knew that uh, it actually came about because I knew Nickelodeon at the time was looking for a uh, boys action show. And I thought, what kind of a cool boys action show could I do? I could do something with a secret agent. I could do something with... Uh, you know, uh, outer space, but I thought, you know, it'd be really fun to do like a superhero thing. And, um, I actually thought of the name of Danny Phantom before anything. I thought, what would be a really cool name for a show? I thought, you know, when I was a kid, I used to love a show called Johnny quest. And that was one of my favorite shows growing up. So I thought if I could come up with a really cool name, like Johnny quest, that'd be really cool. So what's a cool word like quest? What's a cool word? Like? I was like, you know, like dynamite or like lightning, I thought Phantom. I landed on this word Phantom. That's a cool name. And I thought, okay, Billy Phantom, Davy Phantom. And I thought Danny Phantom is a really cool name. So it kind of stemmed from there, from the name. I thought Danny Phantom, does he hunt ghosts? Is he a ghost? And I kind of made it both, where he's half ghost. So he's got like a secret identity. And then he fights ghosts that are uh, in his neighborhood. And uh, that's what, where the show came from. Sweet. That's awesome, dude. Um, I know you're going to be drawing us something today. Uh, what is it, what exactly are you going to be drawing us? Well, it depends on what you want to do. I could I could do Danny Phantom right now if you'd like to see me draw Danny Phantom. I could do that for you. Wow, and, uh, um, th that sounds amazing. That sounds amazing, dude. You get go here. You're, you're the host with the you're the host with the most. You're in control, so I'll just <laughs> do what you tell me. Do you, do you want to maybe ask one of the fans what they'd like you to draw? Yeah, let me do Danny Phantom first. Do you want to, to do prove Danny that Phantom? I can draw. 
Okay, cool. Yeah, I'll do the Andy Phantom, and then I'll, then I'll take requests from the fans. How about that? Okay, perfect. That sounds awesome. Sounds good? Okay. Yeah, so um, can you guys see this okay? Let me, um, yeah, so. We can see it perfectly. See, so. Is it okay while you're perfect. drawing that I ask you a few questions? Yes, it's fine. Okay, sweet. What what projects are you working on right now? I know the whole world is under lockdown. Have you found inspiration to start working on anything? Oh yes, I'm working on a bunch of new projects right now. In fact, I'll be um, pitching a few new projects as uh, as the weeks go by. And I'm also um, starting a brand new streaming service, which is a very big deal too. So I'm I'm starting a whole bunch of projects. Oh sweet! And um, yeah, and. Working on that. So here's, uh, let me see, let me get his eyes going here. And so, um, you know, I'm drawing with a regular marker here on a, just a regular piece of paper. And I want you all to know that you don't need to be a millionaire to learn how to be an artist. You can just draw with simple materials. And so there's a little bit of Danny Phantom for you. At what, at, sorry, Butch, at what age did you start feeling like this is something that you're going to take further? Oh, I started drawing when I was a little kid, when I was very young. And, um, you know, I grew up in a state uh, called Michigan right. uh, here in the U.S. And in Michigan, it's a beautiful state, but it's not um, really based in the entertainment industry. There's not a big, um, you know, not a big Hollywood presence there. So I would watch television, and back in those days, there was no internet. So I'd watch, I'd watch television, and I would think, like, how did those people get in there? How right. did those people get into that TV? How did, how did that man draw that cartoon? And so I, I, and eventually I found out it was in a magical place called California. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to move to California. So here's Danny Phantom. Let me hold it up there. So there, that's what Danny Phantom looks like. And um, that's one of my most popular characters. And I really am very... Uh, very blessed and very thankful that people like this character so much. I'll sign my name. Do you tell me yeah, something when you creating when you creating something like this? Do you before it's put out and the general public get to see it? Do you have a feeling like it's going to be a success, or you just create the thing and and you just hope that uh, people are drawn to it? Yeah, it's sort of a mixture of both. I mean, uh, you have to you know before anyone even sees it, I've worked on it for months. I worked on it for months and months and months before I even show it to anybody. And then once you show it to somebody, um, hopefully it's the right person. Hopefully it's a person that can move it to the next level. And if they like it, then they show their boss and then they show their boss. And eventually, before a studio even spends money on it and they pay you to make it, it's got to go through the hoops of about you know, 20 people that say, yes, we like this. It depends on the size of the company. If it's a massive company like Nickelodeon was, it took a lot more hoops to jump through. Right. Um, but if, it, if it's a smaller company, things, the approval process is a lot easier. You know, um, for example, if I was going to sell a movie to, to Disney or something like that, you know, the, the budget on a movie is so big for them to sign off on that money to forget you to make a movie uh, everyone's got to agree to the budget. Everyone's got to agree to the idea. And then once you sell the idea, then you go through the notes process. You know, we like your idea, but can we add this? Can we change this? Can we add this character? Can we maybe make the lead character a female instead of a male? All those sorts of things. And so, you know, those are things you got to be prepared for as a creator is to, uh, you know, sell your idea, but maybe, you know, make a few um, uh, concessions along the way. Sweet. So, so to, to add on to that, you, did you find getting into the industry at first, was that difficult to get your ideas heard? And Oh, yeah, good question. Well, I came into the industry as an artist first. I came in as a, as a, um, a, a worker. You know, I, I wanted to be an artist, and so I would do storyboards on this show, and I would do character designs on this show, and I would be writing scripts on this show. And uh, eventually, when I got the chance to sell my own show... Uh, I'll draw my first show here. Um, I'll draw my next show. Or actually, this Danny Phantom was my second show, and uh, my first show I saw was a show called The Fairly Odd Parents, and um, that show. Let me see if this marker works here. Can you guys see that? Okay. I can, we can see both. So there you go, Greg. So, oh, not marker. It's too thin. Fatter marker. Okay, we go go to fatter marker. So this show starred this guy. Um, this is a character. 
Let me see if I can, I don't want to give it away yet. Um, but this character's name is Cosmo, and he is a fairy godparent. By the way, I really wish I was there in person with you. I was so looking forward to coming to Comic-Con this year. Oh, man, next year for sure. It's so nice and warm here. Yeah. We're going into summer. I know it's so weird. We're going into winter. Our, our, we're all in reverse here. Right. Yeah, I, um, it's uh, reversed. Uh, I'm in California, so we're still pretty warm. But, uh, yeah, it's good. It's, it just turned fall, autumn here. Uh, tell me uh, okay, something. So this is, this, yes. Sorry, Butch. Did you ever base any of your characters on, like, your family members or friends <laughs> or maybe even yourself? Good question. Uh, not really. I ended up basing um, these characters on uh, sort of mixtures of other cartoon characters. You know, um, I would base I'd base characters like this on uh, maybe some characters I watched on the Flintstones right. back when I was a kid, or I'd or I would you know maybe some Bugs Bunny cartoons or things like that. I go I like that aspect of this character and this character. And there were some personality traits I would take. Uh, you know, in fact, there's one character in the Fairly Odd Parents. He's a uh, doctor. He's a fairy doctor. His name is Doctor Rip Studwell, and he was based on me. Oh right. <laughs> but my character. <laughs> My workers, my my artists were drawing him one day, and they based him on me. So I thought that was kind of funny. So I'll sign this guy too. There you go. So uh, yeah, so that is um, Cosmo from the Fairly Odd Parents. So this show, I sold this show in um, 1997 as a one short cartoon. I sold it as one short cartoon to Nickelodeon. It was seven minutes long, and uh, they liked the cartoon so much they gave me another one do another story. So I did another one and they gave me another one. Eventually they gave me 10 short cartoons to do over like a two year period. So I did them mostly by myself for the first 10, had a couple people helping. And then um, they bought it as a series. Uh, they loved it so much. They bought it as a series and made it a full blown series. So I got to have a staff of about 25 people, 20, 30 people. And we made it into a real series and it aired on Nickelodeon in March of 2001. And it stayed on the air for 17 years. Wow, and um, we yeah kept making it. It's thank everybody up. It's it's very big. Yeah, in South I think Africa. it's been to South Africa. Have yeah, it, has yeah. it been there? Sorry, has it been to South Africa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is very big in South Africa. Awesome. This Dexter. Awesome. Yeah. So um, look, look, today in South Africa, it's Heritage Day, right? Um, it's actually a public mm. holiday. So I was wondering, mm. would you be able to draw a? I know one of your characters and turn, turn them into a heritage figure, South African heritage figure. Yeah, I need to know what a heritage figure looks like. So, I'm so sorry. What so with Heritage like? Day, Heritage Day means your diff different cultural aspects. So like Zulu, Kosa, Afrikaans, whatever it may, it may be. So um, I was, how can I explain this better? Uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to explain. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, are they, what, what sort of costume do they wear? The shield and stuff like that? The shield... And they've got like they call it's called a bear shoe. It looks like a skirt. It's made out of um, mm. it's made out of cow cow skins. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's, per <laughs> that's perfect. That's that works as well. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to insult anybody. I don't want to get it wrong and mess it up. So I'll I'll just do this. Here's here's a character from my show, uh, Fairly Odd Parents. Again, this is another character. And um, let me draw this. Yeah, when you're drawing things like cultural stuff, I want to make sure I get it correct. Right. So I don't want to mess that up. Oh. So, here's what we'll do. This is this is Timmy Turner right. from the Fairly Odd Parents. We we have. And by the way, Dexter. By the way, Dexter's Lab was a show that I worked on, but I never created that show. That's not my show. Right. Um, yeah, that was a show that I worked on as an employee, and that was created by a guy named Gendy Tartakovsky. And that was a great show to work on. I love that show. Uh, but yeah, my show is fairly out here. So there's Timmy Turner. Right. And we'll write, well, he'll just say, Happy Heritage Day. Sweet. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm looking forward to learning more about Heritage Day. There's, there's a fan of yours, Isabel, who's dying for you to draw Cosmo. Oh, I just drew him before. <laughs> yeah, 
Yes, this is him right here. Wait, hold on. This is Cosmo, yes. right? Here. She, she says, thank you very much, and thank you for spreading your, sharing your talent with the world. Uh, well, tell her thank you, and I'm, I'm very, I'm honored to be here, and it's exciting. Hey, um, yeah, there's other characters I can do, as long as my marker holds out here. Um, I can do one more character for you. I can draw my other character. This is my newest character, but um, this show didn't run as long as Fairly Odd Parents, but it's still a very fun character to draw. And um, my latest show that was on Nickelodeon was called Bunsen is a Beast. And uh, Bunsen was a little beast, and he was the first beast to ever go to a human school. And he didn't want to scare anybody. And so he um, is a cute little guy. He has little horns up here. When, you, when you're drawing a character like this, do you ever think about um, about making it more kid-friendly, or do you just go with your initial idea? You know, it, it depends. Um, for the, in fact, this character is a great example. When I first drew this character, he was very um, uh, lizard-like. He was very scaly, and he was very... Um, he looked more like, a, like I said, like a lizard or a dinosaur. And when I drew him... Uh, the boss from Nickelodeon said, you know, I like your character, but I think he could be more kid friendly. And I said, really? Let me show you that. I said, really, do you think so? And so I actually redrew him and drew him a little more fuzzy. So he's actually a little what could be redrawn, you know. And so, uh, yeah, that's that's Bunsen right there. So, do you have any advice for like animated students uh animated students who are trying to find work in the industry? I do. Um, you look and see where the business is. You know, when I was growing up, like I said, I was in Michigan, a uh, wonderful, beautiful state in the United States, but there wasn't really a big animation industry there. Um, and so I thought, if I'm going to go be an animator, I've got to move where the animation industry is. So I moved to California. That's where Walt Disney Studios was. And that's where all the big, you know, TV studios were. So I had to get out of my comfort zone. I had to get out of my house. I had to get out away from my family um, and, and move out and, and go to that where that industry was. I'm not saying that it was easy to do. I'm not saying that it's always the... Um, thing people want to do but if your career means anything to you then you'll go where you need to go and then eventually hopefully you'll get to the point where you can actually bring your career to you these days it's a lot easier to work from home right um, you know with the internet and and zoom and everything you know especially during this pandemic animation is the perfect thing to do because um we don't have to really work in rooms with other people you i mean yeah. i like where i love working in a collaborative env environment like that but now an animator can sit in their house and, you know, uh, do their work and just email their work. So you don't really have to even be anywhere um, and uh, collaborate unless you want to. Right. So you were saying that you, you're pitching three new ideas, right? Three new projects. Pretty soon. I got a few projects I'm pitching, yes. And I, I, I don't know if you're you allowed to share that with us? Nah. No. <laughs> well, right now... I, I, prob I probably can't right now, only because uh, they're they're sort of yeah they're sort of confidential at the moment. Right. But uh, I, the minute the minute something happens with them, I'll be more than happy to share them. I would love to share them. I it's just when you're in the pitching stage, you kind of want to keep things as close to to your vest as possible totally. until they're ready to be revealed. So yeah, but um, you know I could draw some more characters for but, you if you like, so, or I could do or could, sorry, you know. but here's my question. So with these these three projects at at this stage in your career where you've got this history behind you, what inspires you when you sit down to start working on something new? Um, do you, are you at the desk and inspiration finds you there or, or you hit with inspiration and then go and draw something? Oh, that's a very good question. I, uh, I, it kind of works both ways. I am a guy who, um, I never really stop working. I'm always drawing. I'm always creating. I'm always doing something in my sketchbook, I'm always doing something um, uh, online. Like right now, I actually illustrate paintings for this amazing Bible I get to work on. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that. That's kind of a side project I'm doing. 
I have a uh, YouTube channel that I'm creating some animation for. Um, I've done some animation on YouTube in the last year, uh, a, a channel called the Hobby Kids Adventures channel. And um, I've been working on that cartoon for the last year. That's a lot of fun, wonderful family we got to work with. And so working on that, um, I have a new book that I've written called Mad Hustle. And um, it's all about pitching and selling shows in Hollywood. So that book uh, is out now. You can get that. Go to madhustlebook.com or you can get it on Amazon. And I uh, am doing a podcast called the Mad Hustle Podcast where I talk about um, the creative process and selling your show, selling your project in Hollywood. How do you do it? What's the first thing you should look for? What do studios look for? So that podcast is out right now. You can hear that. Um, we just got put on India's biggest podcast platform, which is exciting. So uh, we're all over any, any, anywhere you find podcasts, you can find us. And um, yeah, so I'm um, working on that stuff. And You're then, probably the uh, most yeah, productive person through lockdown. <laughs> 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 well i think i think you have to look at it I, you know i could have stopped doing stuff during lockdown and i thought oh, there's no way i i gotta always keep doing stuff right and so um yeah so there's a bunch of projects i'm working on now the, the, the three main ones i'm working on now um i'm excited about and then uh yeah i'll keep you guys posted on those i'd love to share them with you soon. sweet well all the fans say all the best to you uh all the fans in south africa you need to come down you'd love it have you ever been to Africa? I can't wait. I've never, I've never been to South Africa. I was, I have some friends there. I have a lot, actually a few friends there, oh, okay. and uh, making more friends now, which is great. Uh, I have some great followers on Instagram who follow me from uh, Insta uh, on Instagram. There's one young man. His name is Simon Meeting, and he always says hi to me on Instagram. So I want to say hi to Simon. Oh, hi, sweet. Simon. And my friend, my friend Shal Marai. Hello, Shal. He's down there, and uh, Martine, the person you work with, she's a friend of mine. Right. And uh, yeah, so yeah, some great people. So, tell me, that with your inspiration that you find you find just from working and continuously doing it, but is there are there other cartoons that are out there that you watch and you kind of think that uh, okay, cool, I need to make something? Is there anything that inspires you in a good competitive way? Oh yeah, I get I get inspired all the time. I get inspired. Um, I, I really like a lot of um, anime cartoons right now. I love um, you know certain anime cartoons. I love um, I love classic cartoons as well. I love Bugs Bunny. I love uh, Mickey Mouse. I love uh, you know Scooby Doo. Um, all the classics. Uh, there's all kinds of things I love, um, and and I, I really I get inspired all the time because when I see something done and I love a lot of Pixar things too. And I see, when I see, you know, um, entertainment animation done in such a special way, it really does inspire me. And I hope it inspires other people too, because, um, you know, it's through this inspiration, we get to create new stuff, you know? So that's the part I like. Right. Okay. He has a little challenge. Would you, would you be able to draw one of your characters, but then flip the gender? Ooh, flip the gender. I think I could do that. Yeah. I could draw, let me see. Who could I draw? Um, which one would you like me to flip the gender? Do you want me just to do one, or do you want to, um... Let's see. You just want me to do it, think of it let's, on my own? Let's see what the fans say. What are the fans, what are the fans saying? Oh, somebody asked for Cosmo as a female. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's... What's funny is he dressed up as a female a lot on the show, so that should be a pretty easy <laughs> Let me see. Let me see. Um, okay, if I was going to draw Cosmo as a female, let me see. How long did it take you to like get the style of yours? Oh, you know, I um, took a while to develop it because I worked, um, you know, when you first start working in animation, you always start working on someone else's project first. Right. Normally you come in and you're hired as a, a designer on someone else's show to begin with. And so you've sort of got to learn their style. And so I worked on other shows first. And uh, let me see, I'm trying to, yeah, you can see that. Let me get a little bit closer. Um, but I um, ended up working on other people's stuff first. And then I ended up um, kind of developing my own style when I first designed Fairly Odd Parents. I wanted it to be a show that I never designed in that way before. I wanted it to be an all new design style for me. And so Fairly Out Parents was sort of a, a design style I'd never done before. Let's give him long eyelashes. How about that? 
What was, Butch, what, what was the best advice you ever received from maybe a family member or somebody in the industry? Mm. You know, one of the best pieces of advice I ever received was from a guy named Fred Seibert, who is my, he was a mentor to me for a very long time. He was a, um, he's an exec producer on Fairly Odd Parents as well. You know, there was a time where I wanted to be an actor and he said, you're meant for more than acting. <laughs> I said, really? He goes, yeah, if you just want to be an actor, you're going to disappoint me because you're, you're meant to create your own stuff. I said, really? And um, so I took that advice and I gave up acting and started creating my own stuff. <laughs> oh, wow. But I'm sure the acting so helps a- when, when drawing, though. I'm, I'm sure you can pull from the acting when creating. Oh, yeah, big time. Yeah, I mean, acting, acting really helps with... Um, with uh you know putting personality into a character for sure yeah and uh let's see we'll give him like a a frilly dress here and uh can you see the picture okay oh we can see it clearly excellent okay you know what's interesting about drawing um on this pad is these days i usually draw on my ipad now and um, you know, I, I'm I'm so, I'm wanting to like pinch the picture and like make it bigger <laughs> and smaller, <laughs> but I can't I can't do that on here. All right, let's give Cosmo some lipstick. Do you have that? There do you have that go. iPad or, uh, with you all, at all times? I have it at all times. It's about two feet from me right now. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, I the reason I have the iPad is because um, it is just such a great tool. Because it is just, it, yeah, you know what's great about it? I just said, you know, my marker is running out of juice right here, this big one. But on the iPad, the marker never runs out of ink. You know, it, you <laughs> yeah. just can draw forever. And so it's really great. So there's Cosmo as a girl. I can see that very, basically, I can angle my phone. There we go. That's better. There we go. Hey, that's so awesome. Cosmo as a girl. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have you, You're have welcome. You, have you ever thought about, like, opening up Academy? Uh, to help younger yeah, animators? I, I have thought of that sort of thing. I've, I've, um, I've uh, got some online classes that I put out a while back. Uh, in fact, I've got to check and see if they're still operational. I put them out. You know, you put these things out, you make them, and you hope people like them. And then people do. People respond well. But there's so many art classes out there. The challenge, it's another, mar- it's another thing to learn. It's like I can do all the art classes that I want, but if nobody knows they're there... I have to, you know, advertise them and put them on social media. So it becomes a whole marketing um, campaign that you have to learn how to do. I encourage all artists to become marketers of their own um, work because, you know, like I said, no one's going to know that it's there right. unless you begin to uh, advertise it. But do you think that it's easier now with so- social media um, or was it easier back then when you started? We but nowadays people have so much help. You can put your stuff out there with your Instagram, Twitter. Mm. Oh, things are a lot easier now. I mean, I, I would say e- it's easier to advertise now because yeah. just at the touch of, uh, of a button now, you can advertise on Instagram to hundreds, maybe even thousands of followers. You know, it's wonderful to have a, like, a platform like Instagram or Facebook or even Twitter, things like that, where you can reach you know, thousands of people very, very quickly. And um, it's a percentage game. If you put a um, if you put a, a drawing class out and you advertise it to a thousand people, hopefully at least a hundred of them will look, and maybe ten of them will click the button to buy something. So it's, it kind of funnels down as a percentage thing. Right. So, um, and I encourage all those all you artists out there. If you're an artist, I was talking to a young man last night, as a matter of fact, and I was trying to try to tell him. He's an artist, but he doesn't do any social media. And I said, well, um, in order to, and he goes, I really want to sell my work and get it out there. And I said, well, if you want to sell your work, you really should go on social media. He goes, oh, I don't like social media. I said, well, you have a very hard time selling your work then these days because that's really how to sell it. It's it's through the internet. I mean, I you guys need to have blogs. Yeah. Um, all artists need to have, a, you need to have a website and all that stuff. You really need to have um, those um, things in place if you're going to be an artist who sells his work or her work. Tell me something, which is your favorite real life movie? <laughs> uh, you know, I really love one of my favorite movies of all time is uh, Back to the Future. Oh, is it? I Back- love Back to the Would, okay. Back to the Future. I love This is leading into my next question. Would you be able to draw 
Michael J. Fox animated? Uh, oh, I probably could. I, I, I think I could. Let's see. I could do that. Or um, I should have said Star Wars, darn it. How about if I do Star Wars? <laughs> Let's see. If I was going to do Michael J. Fox, and he's a kid. Let's see. And he's got like his cool hair. And we'll, give him, we'll make him like if he's in the Fairly Odd Parents. How about that? And then we'll. And let's see. I, I remember this movie when it came out. Um, it was so much fun because it's such a great comedy. Right. You know, and uh, the story is so funny. Oh, wow. Back in the 80s, they did make it into a series. Okay. And uh, if you if you watch the show Rick and Morty, it's sort of a takeoff on Back to the Future. Right. Um, it kind of is like an adult, you know, uh, version of uh, Back to the Future. So there's uh, his face. And let's see, he's probably got his little T-shirt on. I know he's got that vest. Yeah, he wears he's the got vest. His little, uh, he's got the, the orange vest. Let me see. Uh, I wish I had colors right now. It would take me forever to draw with color right now. So let's see. He's got the vest. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this without a rough sketch underneath. I'm just kind of winging this right now. Right. So I'm having to uh, make, make sure that I uh, get it right. Plus, I'm drawing with ink, so I can't erase. This is truly, truly um, a gut-wrenching moment for me. Okay. Oh, wow, Doc, are you telling me that you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? Sorry, I'm, I lost you uh, there, Butch. Yeah. How about that? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Great. I, I was just trying to do a Michael J. Fox impression. Like, Doc, are you telling me that you built a time machine <laughs> out of a DeLorean? That's great. This is really impressive. Oh, my gosh, years ago. But, uh, yeah, so here's a little bit of a, let's see if you can see that, okay. I can, oh, I so can there's see a little that. bit of my, yeah, there he is, a little Michael J. Fox. And um, I'll say Star Wars next time. I'll draw Yoda next time. Okay, I have one more, one more challenge for you. Yes. Would you be able to draw me? Oh, my goodness. I think I could. Let's see here. I'll stand still. Well, you're very handsome, first of all. <laughs> you're very handsome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and <laughs> let's see. Let me look at your face. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> and you have uh, a very chiseled face. Let's see. And you have uh, short hair. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's always tough to draw people on the spot because you want to make sure that you don't insult them. Oh, no. But you want to make sure that you uh, can capture them. How old are you? I am 33. 33. Yeah, th have you been to America before? I actually have been to the States quite a few times to perform. I'm a comedian. Oh. <laughs> Oh, are you really? Yes. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Yeah, I haven't been out to L.A. I've been to New York a few times and North Carolina, but never L.A. Oh, I got you. Well, L.A., we're waiting for you. We'd love to see you out here. I'd love to join you guys out there. And you would like the weather because it's pretty warm here most of the time. Okay, let's see. Yeah, South Africa, South Africa is pretty good when it comes to the weather. We have mm. like maybe two months of cold weather and then we're back to usual scheduling. Okay, so that's probably you right there. Let me right. see if I can get this close. There you are. Let me oh, see. I see there it. You are. <laughs> my, wait, 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 hold on. There we go. Wait, where's my phone? Hold on. There, 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 there. That's it. <laughs> that's oh, awesome. Okay. <laughs> I know you, all, you have an earpiece, but you have a mouth, you have a, a microphone. So we'll put the microphone right there. There we go, coming out of your face there. So, oh, that's awesome. I'll color in your, I'll color in your hair too. It helps if the hair is colored in. And <laughs> I don't get them as much anymore because I think I've drawn pretty much everybody that I know. Right, that's a perfect birthday yeah. gift. If you forget to get somebody a gift, just. 
Just put oh, on your yeah, trust me. I've, I've I've taken advantage of that many many times. <laughs> yeah, there we go. So let's see. And how do I spell your name again, my brother? Robbie R O B B Y. R O B B Y. And I'll just sign my name right here. Here we go. Sweet. So, that Dude, is you, Robbie. Thank you so much, Butch. Thank you so much. That's awesome. You're, you're welcome, bro. <laughs> I love it. I've learned so much <laughs> chatting to you, man. Thank you. Thank you for welcome. your advice. It's early, in the morning. it's early in the morning for me, so doing this so early is very uh, interesting for me. <laughs> are you going to start off the day or are you going to go back to bed? Oh, no, I'm going to start off the day now. It's two. You can see the sun is coming up behind me out the window there, so it's time, it's time to get up now. But my family's still asleep, so that's good for them. Sweet. Thanks so much, eh, Butch. All the best, eh? Yes. Are we done? Is this it? Am I saying goodbye? Yeah, yeah. See you. Thank you so much, bro. Bye. All right, bye. Bye, guys.